Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to WCA Biology. This is Miss Peachy again, and we are oh, supposedly doing Unit 8, Lesson 2 on Genetic Variation from Meiosis. So I'm hoping that you're going to start reading through this unit and realizing that much of this is review for you guys. It should be at this point because we are just talking about meiosis again, but also talking about where we get genetic variation um, from the process of meiosis. So we've kind of gone through this already, I think, in previous lessons, but we'll go ahead and do it again. Remember that there is always a notes guide, which is also linked on your student hub and on my website as well. So our keywords here are crossing over. Um, has nothing to do with the near-death experience here, by the way. It's got to do with uh, meiosis, gametes, haploid, heredity, um, homologous chromosomes, independent assortment, inheritable genetic variation, which is pretty much what we're exploring throughout this entire lesson, karyotype, and again, meiosis. So essentially saying that there is a lot of variation from parent to offspring. If you look at this cute little puppy, you got this German Shepherd mom and the puppies, and the puppies aren't exactly like the mother. They're also not exactly like the father, and they really aren't a perfect combination of the two either. There's variety that exists here. And so where does that variety come from? It's obvious that you inherit your traits from your parents. You can probably see that. I can see that with my siblings, with my parents. I inherited my a lot of my dad's characteristics, right? I have a same color eyes as my dad, the same coloration, very fair like my father is. Um, but my height comes from my mom's side of the family. So, you know, it just kind of depends. There's lots of different traits that you are inheriting from both sides of your family. But how is it that you don't look exactly like your brothers and sisters, even though you both have the same parents? And you would expect then that if part of your characteristics came from mom and part came from dad, that you would have similar or almost the same as your brothers and sisters. And that's not true. We don't have the same characteristics as our siblings unless we are identical twins, right? And so the answer lies in meiosis. Remember that the whole purpose of meiosis is the production of sperm and egg cells. Okay, the production of sperm and egg cells, right? So let's think about that for a moment. You take a single cell with 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs, and eventually you end up with four egg or four sperm cells, each with only half the number of chromosomes at 23 apiece. And in that process of the production, the egg and sperm, once they are formed, actually already contain genetic variation that wasn't there before. And so the question is, where does that come from? So genetic, um, so in meiosis, it, this is a process of double cell division. And again, we've gone through this, right? You start off with 46. The first thing that happens even before meiosis begins you have, you have replication that happens. They so end up with 92. And the reason why we have replica replication is just so that we have enough chromosomes to make uh, four from that, right? So after that replication, you get a first process of division where you end up with two cells that are 46 each. This is called meiosis one. And then each one of those will divide a second time and you end up with three or four, excuse me, cells that are 23 each. And that is meiosis two. Well, if we investigate further into meiosis one, we end up looking at a stage in meiosis one known as prophase. And during prophase, this is where you have those 92 chromosomes. Each one is you've got multiple copies, right? Um, so let's look at a couple of terms here. We have homologous chromosomes and we have sister chromatids. 
So let's kind of delve into what's going on in meiosis one here. So I'm gonna move, oops. We're gonna move this aside and look at meiosis one. And we're not gonna draw 92 chromosomes because that would be kind of ridiculous. So we're just gonna look at just a couple of them here. So let's say we have, remember you have 23 pairs initially and then you make copies of those. So inside the nucleus, we have a single chromosome pair. Right there, right? And there are each one here, if we look at it, the yellow guy has two branches to it, right? And so we call these sister chromatids in that X. So the yellow is a set of sister chromatids. And then our purplish pinkish color, burgundy color, is another set, right, of sister chromatids. So when we look at sister chromatids, so the idea here is that you inherit one of each of these from your parent, each parent, right? So let's just kind of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this first because I think that it's easier if I do this. Okay, let me do this first. Let me just start this whole page over here. Okay, so before replication, I think that's an easier place to start. We have two copies of each chromosome. One came from your mom and one came from your dad. So we'll color them different colors. So let's say the burgundy one came from mom and the yellow one came from dad. Then you have that replication that happens. So this one's gonna replicate and this one's gonna replicate. Oops. Er can't make a nice X there. There we go. They're going to replicate, right? So now you've got two copies from mom and two copies from dad. The copies that are the same, the two purples, are sisters. We call those sister chromatids. Um, the fact that we have one from mom and one from dad, they're the same chromosome, but they vary slightly because they have different alleles on them. So we call those homologous chromatids or homologous chromosomes, right? Sister chromatids versus homologous chromosomes. So if I back it up a little bit, these two are homologous chromosomes right now. They have the same genes on them, but remember that genes, sometimes you inherit like the blue-eyed gene, sometimes it's the brown-eyed allele, right? They're versions of the gene. So they're gonna vary slightly, but they still code for the same stuff. It's just they may have different, you know, um, alleles on them. So these are what we call homologous. These are homologous chromosomes. Once they make copies of themselves, the two purples are now sister chromatids because they are identical to each other. Hopefully that makes sense, those two terms. I find those two terms slightly confusing myself. So I have to kind of backtrack and think about it oftentimes. But homologous meaning that they code for the same information, but they have those allele variations. So the homologous ones are the one copy from mom, one copy from dad. The sisters meaning they're identical. Okay, so twins, I guess. Maybe twins would be better here, but we just we say sisters. So during prophase one, every chromosome is going to replicate. So then you have sisters. Everyone has a sister at that point, right? So if you can envision all of these kind of jammed in 
the nucleus, it's very crowded in there. What happens is what just happened in my picture. There's not enough space. So when they replicate, they start overlapping with each other, right? So you get this overlapping that happens, which we can see here. And a little bit of one rubs off on the other and vice versa. So when all is said and done, you might end up with a little purple on the yellow guy and a little yellow on the purple guy, right? They still have all of the alignment of the genes intact. They just kind of swapped a bit. That is the process called crossing over. And you can see that in this picture on the right as well, right? Kind of see that here? They drew that here and they showed the, the swapping and the crossing over here. We can kind of see that over here. So this is one way in which genetic variation is introduced is through crossing over. And it only happens in prophase one because that is when you have all 92 chromosomes present in the nucleus. And it happens when your homologous chromosomes kind of like mingle a little bit and swap parts. That's what's happening. Okay, it does not happen because remember, the sister chromatids are still connected to each other in prophase one. Sister chromatids do not separate until um, meiosis two. They don't separate until meiosis two. All right, so then the other thing that we see here is what's happening. Well, you have all of those homologous chromosomes together, right? So we're gonna draw our nucleus or our cell again. No nucleus because the nuclear envelope has now dissolved. And you've got your different um, homologous chromosome pairs all lined up in the center, right? And I'm just gonna draw one for now just to make it easier for us to follow. But one of these pairs is going to go to the left and one of these pairs is going to go to the right. So this would be metaphase one. So then if we keep going with metaphase one, or not metaphase, this will actually be anaphase and then eventually telophase, one of those homologous pairs goes to the left, one goes to the right, eventually the cell divides down the middle and you end up with two new cells. One of them has the purple set, one has the yellow set. These also may have some mingling, right? So some swapping. I may have a little bit of yellow over here and a little bit of purple over here. So now there already is some genetic variation. So then we've got two cells. Now these two are going to divide in meiosis two, right? So what happens in meiosis two then is those sister chromatids are going to separate. And this is where it helps to have like a second, a second um, ex a chromosome in here too, just to kind of give you an idea. So remember there's 46 of these pairs. So we have to remember that there's a lot of them in there. It's not just the one. So when they separate, now you've got, I'm gonna draw that with a little yellow on it. Like that one, you've got two green guys here. Maybe one of the greens has a little bit of a something on it as well. You've got two of the black. Oh, that we're in this, we're in this cell only. Okay. So now they're going to migrate to opposite ends. And oops, you're gonna have say maybe the green over here and the solid purple. And maybe our sparkle slash green one on this one. And then the purple with the yellow on it over here. We don't know. That's one possibility, right? Or another possibility would be potentially you have a full green one and a purple with the yellow on it on this end, right? And maybe you have the green and purple one here, 
with a solid purple one. That's another possibility. So there's multiple possibilities here. There's actually a bunch of different combinations you could get depending on which went to which end, right? So that introduces variation. This is four potential possibilities from this cell. And guess what? If I were to go down for this one, there would be four potential possibilities for this particular cell. So there's a total of eight potential combinations just from having those two chromosomes. So that's called independent assortment. That means that you still get one of each gene going in your, in your egg or sperm cells, but you don't know which side you're going to get. There's four potential, there's two potential possibilities for each chromosome, and there's multiple chromosomes, right? So you don't know which side you're going to be getting. So there's a bunch of possibilities there, a bunch of variation. Let me, let me give you some information. If there's a little math here. You don't have to know this, but this is kind of cool. If you take two and you raise it to the nth power, an exponent, whereas n represents the number of chromosomes, that tells you how much possibilities there are, how many possibilities. So if we have two chromosomes like we see in this picture, that means we would have two to the nth or four potential possibilities, okay? Let's say like humans do, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23 pairs. Do two to the 23rd power. That gives us well over 8 million possibilities. That's the variation in your eggs or sperm. One in 8 million differences. And that's, that's not even including crossing over. That's not even including, you know, like any other kind of environmental mutations that might happen. So just because of independent assortment, there's a a 1 in 8.4 million chance that one sperm will be identical to the other. It's insane, isn't it? And that's just in youth. Now you've got to combine your 1 in 8 million with your partner's 1 in 8 million, and you can imagine the potential possible combinations of your children. They're just, they're a lot. So that's why you don't look like your siblings, because there's only a, there's an 8.4 million chance that, there's like a 1 in 8.4 million chance that you would, essentially, where you don't look identical. Pretty much not happening. The last thing in this lesson is um, something called a karyotype. And a karyotype is a model of your chromosomes. And oftentimes it can be an actual picture. They can actually take pictures of these. So chromosomes can only be pictured like this during, um, during cell reproduction. Only during mitosis can you get a picture like this. But you can actually see what the chromosomes look like. So you can see that you have two copies of each chromosome, 1 through 22. And when you get to chromosome number 23, those are your sex chromosomes. If you have XY, you are male. If you have XX, you are female. And you can also see how much smaller the Y chromosome is to the X chromosome. And then it talks about some, you know, chromosomal um, mutations that can occur. For example, Turner's syndrome is a rare disorder caused by non-disjunction of the X sex chromosome. In other words, what you end up having, um, you only have one X chromosome and the second one is missing. So if you are a female with, chrome, with um, Turner's syndrome, you'd still represent with female characteristics, but you would have shorter than average heart, you may or height, you may have heart defects, you may have developmental defects, um, mental retardation in some cases. This is where you're missing a copy of the X chromosome. Other non-disjunction disorders include Down syndrome, where you have three copies of chromosome 21, Edwards syndrome, where you have three copies of chromosome 18, and um, Klein-Felter syndrome, where you have an extra 
X chromosome in males, you are XXY instead of being just XY. So you may have more female characteristics because of having that extra X chromosome. So these are all kind of chromosomal abnormalities that lead to um, differences that we see in people's, you know, how they look and how they act and how they think and stuff like that. So, so there you go, genetic variation. This is how it's introduced in meiosis. Hopefully you learned something. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, see you guys in the next video.